Okay, here's a lesson for section 4.4, modeling of formulas. In this lesson, I'm going to teach you how to rearrange formulas to isolate indicated variables. Before we do that, we're going to do an example that will show us the importance of being able to do that. So, I have a question here that says the relationship between how high you are and how far you can see is given by the formula d equals 2 times the square root of 3.2 times h, where h is your height in meters above the ground and d is your distance in kilometers to the horizon. Or in other words, it's how far you can see, the distance that you can see. Okay? So part A, how far can you see from the 360 restaurant? So if we look at our diagram of CN Tower here, here's the 360 restaurant. The question is asking us how far can we see? So it's asking us for the distance to the horizon. Um, and it gives us the height. It gives us the height is 351 meters. It tells us the height of the 360 restaurant is 351 meters. So what this question says is how far can you see um, if you are 351 meters above the ground? So let's use our formula to figure that out. So distance equals 2 times the square root of 3.2 times h. So you know, distance equals 2 times the square root of 3.2 times, I know my height from the 360 restaurant is 351 meters. So I'll plug that in for h. If I plug this in onto my calculator, let's do that. I get 2 times the square root of 3.2 times 351. And I close my bracket. I get 67.028. If I round that to the nearest tenth, um, the distance is approximately 67.0 kilometers to the horizon. So I can see if I'm 351, 351 meters above the ground, I can see for approximately 67 kilometers to the horizon. Part B of this question asks us, um, from the sky pod, the horizon is 75.64 kilometers. So in this case, it actually gives us the distance to the horizon. So it gives us our D value. It says the distance that we can see is 75.64 kilometers. It then asks us how high up is the sky pod to the nearest meter. So here's our sky pod way up here. It asks us how high up is that. So it's asking us for H, but it gave us D. So let's plug in what we know into the equation. D equals 2 times the square root of 3.2 times H. So it tells us the distance that we can see is 75.64 kilometers. And it doesn't tell us the height. So this question is a little bit different because the variable we want to solve for is not isolated. Okay, the h is not by itself. In order to determine the value of h, we'll have to get it by itself. So we're going to have to do some rearranging. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's move this 2 to the other side. Right now I'm multiplying the square root of 3.2 times h by 2. To move the 2 to the other side, I must divide by 2. So I have 75.64 divided by 2 is equal to the square root 3.2 times h. If I evaluate this, okay, I get 37.82 is equal to 3.2 times h. Now I don't want this square root sign, so in order to move a square root to the other side, I must do the opposite of square rooting, and the opposite of square rooting is squaring. So I must square this 37.82. The square root of 37.82 is 1430.3524. Now I must, I have one step left to isolate the h. I've got to move this 3.2 to the other side. Right now I'm multiplying h by 3.2. To move the 3.2 to the other side, I must do the opposite of multiplying by 3.2, and that is dividing by 3.2. So I need to divide this big long number by 3.2 to determine the value of h. And if I type that on my calculator, I figure out that h is approximately 447 meters. So I've determined that um, the sky pod is 447 meters above the ground. 
which was easier to solve and why? Well, if you look at just the amount of work I had to show, the first one was definitely easier to solve because the unknown variable was already isolated for us. In the second one, I had to do a bunch of rearranging to get H by itself. So it was a lot more steps and a lot more complicated. So which was easier to solve and why? I would say A was easier to solve and why? Because the unknown variable was isolated. The unknown variable was isolated. So just look once again, much easier because the unknown variable is isolated. In this one here, the unknown variable is not isolated. I had to rearrange the formula. So what we're going to learn how to do, we're going to learn how to rearrange formulas to isolate variables, different variables. So for example, in this question, I could have rearranged this original formula before plugging anything in so that I got H all by itself. And after I'd rearranged um, the equation to get H by itself, I could then plug in um, the value for D that I knew and then solve for H. And it would have been, it would have been a lot easier. I wouldn't have been working with such big numbers. So when you're working with a formula, both methods are valid. You can do what we did um, for this question here. For this question here, what we did, um, the known variables for variables can be substituted first, and then this equation can be solved for the required variable. That's what we did. Or what you can do is what I was just explaining. Uh, the formula can be rearranged to isolate the required variable, and then the known values can be substituted into the formula. So for each of these following examples, let's practice rearranging uh, a formula for the indicated variable. So rearrange each formula to isolate the variable that is indicated in the question. So for the first example, I have D equals A plus D. And I want to rearrange this formula so that A is isolated, so that A is all by itself. The reason I would want to do that would be if I was given values for D and B and it asked me to solve for A, I could rearrange the equation to get A by itself and then plug in the values for D and B um, to figure out what A would be equal to. When you're rearranging a formula, it's important to note that um, think of the other variables. So if I want to isolate A, think of the other variables as numbers. So think of the D and the B as numbers and then isolate the variable in the same way as if you were solving an equation. So I have D equals A plus B. I want to isolate A. So I have A plus B is equal to D. I want to move this B to the other side of the equation because I want A all by itself. So I'm going to move the B to the left. On the right side, I have, I'm adding B to A. So to move this B to the other side of the equation, I must do the opposite of adding B, and that is subtracting B. So on the left side, I now have D minus B is equal to A. And I'll rewrite that with A on the left side, just because that's how we're familiar um, writing it. So if D minus B equals A, that means that A equals D minus B. OK? So A equals D minus B. And this equation has been rearranged. A is isolated all by itself. Let's do another one. I have C equals 2 times pi times R. Let's isolate this one for R. So let's get R all by itself. Right now, R is being multiplied by 2 pi. The opposite of multiplying by 2 pi is dividing by 2 pi. So to move that 2 pi to the other side, I must divide by 2 pi. And I'm left with R all by itself on one side of the equation. And that's fine. R is equal to C over 2 pi. And I'll rewrite it like that. R equals C over 2 pi. So this equation is now isolated for R. So I can now plug in for my um, value of C and then solve for R. Number three, F Y equals X squared. If I want to isolate for the X, right now X is not by itself. and it has this exponent of 2. What I need to do is I need to get rid of this exponent of 2. I need to move it to the other side. So the opposite of squaring something is square rooting something. So to move the square to the other side, I must square root the other side. So the square root of y is equal to x. And I'll rewrite that as x equals the square root of y. So now x is all by itself. I can plug in my value for y and solve for what x would be equal to. Number four, I have y equals mx plus b, the equation of a line. I want to isolate this 
for x. So I need to get x all by itself. First thing you want to do, just like when you're solving an equation, is you want to isolate the term that contains the variable we want to isolate. So I want to isolate this term here. I want to isolate the mx first. So I'm going to move this b to the other side. The opposite of adding b is subtracting b. So to move it to the other side, I must subtract b. So I have y minus b equals mx. Now I can get the x by itself by moving the m to the other side. The opposite of multiplying by m, so I have m times x, is dividing by m. So I must divide the m to the other side. So y minus b over m, that's a bad m, y minus b over m is equal to x. So now x is isolated all by itself on one side of the equation. I can plug in my values for y, b, and m to solve for what x would be equal to. I'll rewrite this with x on the left side just because that's what we're used to seeing. So if y minus b over m equals x, then x must be equal to y minus b over m. Okay. Let's do this one. b equals w divided by q. I want to isolate the w. So to isolate the w, right now it is being divided by q. To move the q to the other side, I must do the opposite of dividing by q, and that is multiplying by q. So I'll have b times q equals w. And I'll rewrite that with w on the left. w equals v times q. Now w is isolated. I could plug in for v and q and solve for the value of w if I was given the values for v and q. Okay, I have k equals a half times mv squared, and I want to isolate the v. First up, I'm going to think of this as mv squared divided by 2, because I know multiplying something by a half is the same as dividing it by 2. So I have mv squared divided by 2. Now I'm going to move this 2 to the other side, because I want to isolate the term that has the, the indicated variable in it. So I'm going to isolate this mv squared, moving the 2 to the other side. So the opposite of dividing by 2 is multiplying by 2. So multiply the other side by 2, and I'll have 2k equals mv squared. Now I'm going to isolate this v squared. So I'm going to move this m to the other side. Right now I have m times v squared. The opposite of multiplying by m is dividing by m. So to move that m to the other side, I must divide by m. So I have 2k over m equals v squared. Now I need to get this v all by itself. I don't want that squared beside squared beside it. I don't want to know what v squared is equal to. I want to know what v is equal to. So let's get that squared to the other side. I remember from previous questions, the opposite of squaring is square rooting. So to move that square to the other side, um, it becomes a square root. So I have to square root this entire thing. The square root of 2k over m is equal to v. And I'll rewrite that with the v on the left. v equals the square root of 2k over m. So now v has been isolated. Okay, let's do a question where after we've isolated the indicated variable, there's actually something to plug in and solve for. It. So the area A of a square is related to its side length L by the formula A equals L squared. Find the length to the nearest tenth of a centimeter of a side of a square with an area of 32 centimeters squared. So I've got a square. I know all the sides of the square are exactly the same length. So if the side of the square is L, that means this side is also L, and the area is length times width, so L times L, which is L squared. To find the length to the nearest half of a centimeter of a side of a square with an area of 32 centimeters squared. So I know area equals L squared. And what it does, it's asking me to find the length. So I know I'm going to be solving for L, and it gives me the area. It gives me A. So I could plug in for A and then solve for L, or I could rearrange first, like we've been doing, and then plug in for the known variable. So I'm going to do that, because that's what we've been doing in this lesson. So I know it's asked me to find a length. So before I plug anything in, I'm going to get length all by itself. So then after I've done that, I can just plug in and solve without having to do any more rearranging. So let's get L by itself. Right now, L is being squared. To move this square to the other side, I must do the opposite of squaring. The opposite of squaring is square rooting. So the square root of A is equal to L. So that means L equals square root of A. So I know the length of a square is equal to the square root of the area. 
and it gives me the area. It tells me the area is 32 centimeters squared. So let's plug that in. L equals the square root of 32. And if I calculate that, the square root of 32, I get approximately 5.7. So the square root of 32 gives me 5.65, round to the nearest tenth, is 5.7. Length is approximately 5.7, and we're working in centimeters. So the length of that square is 5.7 centimeters. Make sure you go on jensenmath.ca and get the, the worksheet that goes with this lesson. Try it out. Um, let me know if you have any questions.